morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folani. How often do you fly? Uh, because that's going to be uh, our topic of discussion today. Um, the airline industry and um, the dire situation in which it finds itself. Uh, petrol for the airline industry is not called petrol. It's uh, A1, jet A1, or aviation fuel is still the same thing. You've got to put it in the tank there. And um, this has gone way up. It's gone way up. Uh, I'm understanding, looking at my uh, notes here, which is an indication of how often I fly, uh, is an, uh, what, 903 uh, naira per liter in some northern states, uh, so we hear. Well, my guest uh, this morning will help us put perspective on these things. Wale Shadare is a journalist and aviation expert. Thank you very much, Wale, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Indeed, our pleasure. Yeah. As I was just saying, just, you know, grabbing hold of yeah. this flat end of it, uh, um, 903 liter, uh, 903 naira per liter oh, in yeah. some northern states. And I purposely took that because of our location here yeah, in Lagos. So, yeah. And that's, you know, about the farthest that uh, you can go. If it's 903, what was the general pricing, just shall we say about three, four years ago when things were not this bad? Let, let's even put it this way. Thank you for, for this question. Let's even put it this way. Uh, let us not even look at three, four years ago. Let us look at it. January this year, or okay. December okay. this year. Okay. December this year, a vision for a cost um, between 180 or one about 200 and 80 to 200. Yes, um, between that and 250. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing started skyrocketing, and we all know some of the problems that um, could have uh, been responsible for They're that. They're going to mention Ukraine. Absolutely, Ukraine has that because um, Nigeria couldn't. Um, also contribute its quota to the oil um, um, global oil industry and because of the shortage in the um, Ukraine of gas it really affected the whole uh, uh, world not only aviation industry it also affected also um, cost of um, other commodities so even I was in Doha June this year for uh, IATA International Air Transport Association um, AGM, mm -hmm. where the uh, DG of IATA was seriously, uh, where he talked about um, the impact of um, Ukraine, Russia-Ukraine war to the global aviation industry. But let us bring it down to Nigeria. Uh, sure. Aviation is highly, aviation fuel or what we call jet fuel is highly, is deregulated. Um, um, it has no subsidy. Government okay. is not subsidizing. Okay. That's the meaning of it being yes, deregulated. Deregulated. So unlike unlike PMS, your, your, your PMS, your if, if we're going to have, um, if government is going to fully uh, um, 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 deregulate that um, um, sector, I think um, um, PMS is going to be to to sell between maybe probably four hundred or five hundred naira <laughs> now with what we are seeing now, and that is why. Uh, the subsidy has continued to jump up from almost six trillion naira per year. It's so alarming. But let us bring it down to um, the aviation industry. Um, aviation fuel, um, before now, used to take about um, 25, between 25 and 30 percent of airline revenue, but now it's between 50 and 55 percent, even. Of their operating of costs. Of operating costs. And if you look at the airline business, it's highly capital intensive. In fact, one article, maybe it was a bit exaggerated, was yeah. saying that it's gone up as high as 70% of know. their operating costs. I, I, I don't think it's up to that, okay. but, um, but still, very soon it could be up to that. But now. even at that, 50% is it's it's very high. It's it, 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 very, very, very it's high. It's not even sustainable for the airlines. And I actually don't know how the airlines are still in business. but. They just need to keep on flying. And that is why airfares have gone so high now. From Lagos to, uh, for example, Abuja, mm -hmm. it costs between, the least you can get now is 75, 80,000. It could go as high as 150,000. And that's what people have been buying in the last one month. So, upside that, even the international air travel you, too you has know, gone so, up. Sorry, I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Yeah. Uh, but just to put what you just said in context, because um, there are a lot of um, our viewers that perhaps, you know, don't fly. You know, yeah. uh, uh, quite, quite frankly, it's a privilege to fly. But yeah. the, the prices before, uh, mm. people could sort of manage to 
Uh, but now we're hearing you just said, uh, um, I was reading one article on it, and it says that Lagos Abuja return could be as high as 250K. Yes, Lagos it's, Abuja it's return. Very possible. A quarter of a million? Yes, it's possible. Uh, Lagos Kano, uh, between 200 and 300K, depending on time of on booking. time of booking, yeah. Ah. Uh, that is a problem, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and then I have a whole series of... Uh, okay. Let me even here. tell you, Yes. Um, um, just um, about four months ago, FL was just about uh, four or five months ago, was between 25 and 35,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. So, and that was when we had um, aviation for um, going as high... Go, um, aviation for a cost between 200 and 250 then. So it was very easy to for them to... Mm -hmm. uh, put mm -hmm. the affairs uh, uh, at. Um, oh, sorry, please, please, okay. Please, put the affairs at um, uh, twenty-five, thirty thousand, and three or four months ago, the airlines met in what has been generally condemned as um, coming together to fix prices. Okay. They came together to say the least fare that they are going to have is 50, was going to be fifty thousand naira. Then, a lot of people condemning that the regulatory body would have waded in. It is called anti-competition uh, law, where you come together. Why don't you allow um, demand and supply to determine what you're going to charge? Mm -hmm. But at that period, we found the airlines were un uh, unreasonable. But with the situation of things now, it shows that they were not unreasonable. You can now see it shows that what they were there. even trying to manage the situation and charge 50,000 Naira then. But everything has gone south now, that has, uh, which has forced them to say, okay, you think of, we only, we only think of aviation fuel. We are not even thinking of other, other things. We are not thinking of Forex. It's so difficult for airlines to get uh, foreign exchange now from the CBN. So what they do is to resort to the black market which we know the dif differential, the yeah. difference is yeah. so high. But, but why is it so difficult for them, crucially essential as they are, mm -hmm. uh, to get forex? You would have thought that would be a first line priority. Yeah. Do you, you have an idea? You see, the CBN2 is also going through. We are not earning forex like we used to earn before. Our oil um, uh, production has reduced, and a lot of them have been stolen uh, whichever way or why we didn't stop it or why we're not stopping it. It's is another what conversation. Exactly. So you look at what we were producing before uh, compared to what we're producing now. It has gone down now. So we're not earning um, forex. The CBN is not earning a lot of forex to meet up the challenges. People want to go to school abroad. People want to go um, on medication abroad. You need forex. You need it. So the CBN is under pressure mm. to ensure that... Um, they give priority to where it is needed most. And aviation is one of the key areas that the CBN, I feel, the CBN should have looked into. And that is why even the federal, the federal government is owing foreign airlines um, over $460 yeah. million. Dollars. Yeah. In, in fact, this situation is as dire as uh, uh, Dana and Aero to have yeah. said, you know what, you know what, I, I think we're just going to chill. We're just going to take a back uh, no, seat. No, the Dana issue is quite different from what happened to Aero. Aero was because they looked at the situation and said, no, we can't continue to operate like this. Let us shut down and begin to reappraise our operation. So th think of what we're going to do. Maybe we're going to jettison some of these um, uh, consuming uh, uh, gosling aircraft like Boeing 737 and all the rest and begin to have another appraisal of their operation by getting aircraft that are less fuel consuming to uh, uh, and to uh, just to replan their Better operation, efficiency, but that which of Dana, cost money. yes, which is not going to cost money. Uh, that no, I'm Dana, saying that it's going to cost money to acquire yes, those, acquire those the, higher the, we, uh, efficiency. We don't need it, and that is the model um, airlines in Nigeria have have done over the years. Begin to acquire those uh, big aircraft. You don't need them. You really need aircraft that are efficient, fuel efficient, and you know, good for your operation. Most of the flights we have in Nigeria, they are one hour or a little above one hour. At most, you have two hours. Why don't you use aircraft that are good for you? You can cut your cost rather than use those Boeing aircraft, right? those regional aircraft. You don't but need But why, why did they go that there in the first what? place? I mean, now, is it, a, is it from it, a point of view of a prestige? Uh, yeah, I operation? think it's the business plan. It's okay. cheaper to acquire those aircraft when you're starting your operation. 
but it's more expensive for you to maintain those aircraft mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. some of them are relatively geriatric although we don't <laughs> have what we call old aircraft in uh, aviation yes we have old aircraft but, but as long as you begin to um, um, allow them to go through the maintenance phase or the phases of maintenance they are as good as new yeah so but be that as it may you will always have wear and tear on aircraft and that is why a uh, rich nation will make sure that they use aircraft for just three four years the likes of get me raised the likes of uh, Qatar three four years and go into because it's cost effective for them to acquire brand new aircraft. that to go through yes and servicing repairs exactly frequent, and you can blame them they have the money they are, and these then are they very have rich the money. these are very rich country and aviation has also done well for them they have used the aviation to promote to market their countries you know well, as we're saying this and we're going to come back to it because it's really about nigeria here mm -hmm. um uh, you're telling uh, I, I, the, at the very high end, Lagos Abuja return could be 250k. Yeah. Probably won't be always, but could be as that yeah. as, as high as that. Uh, as you know, Nigerians, you know, uh, the UK, uh, the US, mm -hmm. we, 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 we travel those routes yeah. frequently and other places. In fact, there are very few places there you don't find Nigerians. But those two routes, it wasn't a big deal or that impossible to in fact it was probably a bit more difficult to get the documentation to go to the uk mm. now in addition to that mm. you have the fuel. so what what is that like now uh, com uh, comparatively how much again going back you to the to january the, oh, you mean to, 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 uh, international flights yes okay does it affect international flights the same way we are complaining on a domestic no, level no it oh, doesn't okay. affect them the way why it is affecting a lot of nigerians now is because the foreign airlines have their money trapped that's why you you you, you could get uh, first to london as high as um, economic class seat between 800 900 thousand naira compared to before where you can get it for 400 or 500 thousand naira but the problem is that the airlines the international airlines also have problem with nigerian government they have their form stuck in nigeria because of this uh, forest crisis so what they have done is to eliminate the lower classes of fare the way fares are done if you are not in the system you won't understand it we have different classes like class a class b once the class a maybe that class a goes for two hundred thousand naira they start with those ones mm -hmm. once those ones are full they go to the next one maybe you start getting it for 300 350 once those ones are full you start get they go to another class you start getting them like 400 500 thousand naira until it gets to like eight hundred thousand but what they have done now is to eliminate those classes and ensure that you pay almost the same thing for economic class fare which is about eight hundred at least uh, from seven hundred thousand naira to nine hundred thousand naira to a destination such as the uk to destinations such as the uk because they can't continue to um, have their phones uh, stuck in nigeria and ayata has come Ayata is the airline representative a body that has come and said, no, if Nigeria continues with this, there's no way you can get fare, cheaper fares any longer because they are going to eliminate those cheaper classes and go to the higher classes. And for business class now, it ranges between um, 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 3 million and 4 million naira to get to UK, where, which it was maybe 1 million naira before or 1.2 million naira. So, and you also look at the season. We are in a um, um, high season. There's something the airlines call high season. It starts from June during summer. It's mm, very, very of course, high. Of It's course. crazy. Then, yes, a lot of there's, there's a to run, travel. so to speak. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, what the airlines do, they are not for that Christmas. It's demand that you know, determines supply, or supply that determines demand, whichever way you look at it. So, if more people are coming to say, okay, we want this service. So the airlines will say, oh, we don't have enough seats. So what we're going to do is to, is a period for so, them to make money. That's market forces. That's market Purely forces. Market forces yeah, exactly. But what the international airlines have done now is to remove those um, um, cheaper classes and ask people to pay more. So it's so crazy out there now. That so that, so that, I have a big button for interruption. So that the guy, the ordinary Nigerian um, who, you know, says, look, it's just a six-hour flight to the UK. Yeah. I don't care where, you know, almost whatever. 
I will pay the least possible. Yes. Now, people that do. even is being removed yes. as a possibility. As a possibility. From so what people have done now is to say, okay, if these legacy airlines like British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, Delta, um, United are charging these IFS, because a lot of people will not mind because mm -hmm. it's branding. Mm -hmm. It's brand. They want to fly with British mm -hmm. Airways. It brings a lot of class. So people will say, should you not to get to... Exactly. Uh, my destination. Yes. If it takes me to go to Addis Ababa, then come back to South Africa, mm -hmm. then now connect um, uh, London, I'm okay. No problem. No problem. If, if yes, it will cost know, me less. If it could cost me less. Yeah, I can go through the whole world. I can go around the whole world to get this thing cheaper. Let them take me anywhere. But somebody will look at it. Why do I want to go to Addis Ababa? Why don't I fly um, straight to my destination? And they will look at it, oh, it's going to cost more. Okay, I don't mind. And you know the problem is that FS are four times or three times um, higher in Nigeria than what you have in Ghana. Okay. That is a yes, fact. International. That is Jet a fact. A1 yes. is three times as expensive in Nigeria uh, as in Ghana. I, I haven't checked, but I don't think it's also very cheap in Ghana. Oh, it's okay. also very it's also expensive. Okay. Even PMS is more expensive in Ghana than what we have in Nigeria. But I've not actually checked to know if jet fuel is more expensive in Nigeria than... Um, you, you know, because it's, it's global it, it, forces. What the airlines, uh, what the marketers are doing is that they are selling at what they bought. Mm, you mm. can't expect somebody oh, that yeah. is in business... That's what the Yoruba refers to as <laughs> Intabara Lamata. Lamata. So you can't expect them to, sell, uh, to buy at 5 Naira and sell at 450 because they want to, the airlines to be very happy. They're also in business. They, they source for us to also get this commodity. And you, most times you can't even blame them. Because if you look at it, trucking the, this commodity from uh, the port even to the airport, because we don't have um, this underground um, um, pipe Plans. that links uh, Mosimi or Ijibo to the airport, it has been destroyed. And we have not been able to repair it. So, so it all takes of this adds to the cost exactly. of it arriving where it oh, exactly. is needed. Exactly, you will truck the whole, uh, the commodity from maybe Ijibo or Mosimi to the airport. It takes a lot of money. You are going to pay the tanker driver. You are going to do a lot of things. So all these things, even when the 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 jet jet A one uh, lands in wherever in Lagos you're still going to bring it from there to the depot. You're still going to do a lot of... So they add all this cost to the you, you cost know, of and, this and, and that's something we can talk about, Meg, because um, at this stage, yeah. uh, let's take a quick break. Okay, welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. If you've just arrived, we're looking at the record high fares uh, that have hit the Nigerian airlines uh, you know, uh, space, the Nigerian airline sector. You heard about those horrendous prices. For those who have been managing to fly before, uh, now it's getting, we're hearing that um, people are discouraged from flying. Uh, a lot of business, uh, businesses are now resorting to virtual meetings. Uh, you know, if you absolutely don't have to fly, well, people are not doing so because we're hearing of, I mean, who, within Nigeria, uh, fees that could go as high as a quarter of a million naira. You heard that right. 250,000 could be, but, you know, it depends on uh, a number of things. Um, whereas we've been hearing uh, from Mr. Wali Shadare. Now we have Mr. Olumide Onwayo, as I was saying, uh, our other expert, Assistant Secretary General, Aviation Roundtable. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, Olumide. Thank you. And uh, we've been looking at the situation, so you, know, you have some catching up to do, so uh, let, me just come, <laughs> let me just come to you. Um, I'm imagining that all of this that uh, Wali has been talking about is uh, the, the fact that our refineries uh, how does one put it? What they are, virtually non-existent. Yeah. So they are not able to help out. Would it would would it have been helpful if our refineries were up in terms of jet A one? If you listen to the minister, Honourable Mr. Mavisho Rusak, he said uh, they don't have a short-term solution to the fuel crisis, uh, major fuel crisis. That uh, while well, they have a long-term solution, and what was the long-term solution? Uh, that uh, we have Dangote refinery that not even owned by the government. Mm -hmm. And man can finish and say, well, I am not selling. Aviation fuel. I would rather sell PMS and make more money and collect subsidy directly from government. Or uh, then the two uh, uh, refiners we have, Patakota and uh, Kaduna, that they are undergoing the turnaround maintenance and will be ready. So those are the things I waiting for. But for 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 but some limited, of, the way you just said that, the, us, the way you just give us that fact, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it seems like you don't seem seem impressed. I'm not. 
I'm not. I'm not. I, I can never wait for the Potakot and the uh, Potakot and Kaduna refinery for anything. Again, Dangote owns the refinery. You cannot plan. But Nigeria is also a shareholder by force. Until then, by you, force. You cannot plan. Okay, until when Dangote is ready to open, we cannot keep waiting for him. We must work with what, what we have. And what do we have? We have numerous modular refineries in the country that are not allocated crude oils. And if they have, if, if those uh, modular refineries can be talked to, more, but happily. Abishon fuel is deregulated, so there's no subsidy in it. So anybody coming to, to refine Abishon fuel will, will, will move straight into benefiting from what's already in the market. The only thing you do for that, the price will now go lower because rather than importing now, we are buying directly from inside the inside, inside Nigerian market. But again, because it's deregulated, we should not be so happy. I, I don't expect that if it is 900 naira, 900 naira now, if we have it here, maybe probably will come to about 700 or 750, not that I'm looking at half the price. Mm. But then, whatever price we have, will definitely be cheaper than the cost of importing into it Nigeria is, and yes. using forex. And that is the big beauty about it. So I it's think around, it, it's about reported to be around 903 naira. Yes. There are two or three modular <laughs> modular refineries in the country that are ready, but cannot even get allocation of the crude oil. And that's important. And, and the other hope I have... I understand we're not able to even meet our OPEC quota uh, for whatever reason. Let us meet domestic quota, Ravia, yeah? before we talk about uh, OPEC. <laughs> Let us meet domestic quota. We need to first survive. It's when you eat that you can now say, okay, you want to give, uh, take outside to go and sell. You must keep the one you would from your farm in the house. So, so, so when is this situation, uh, because it's a dire situation, uh, we, we discussed Dana. earlier, which you know all about, uh, Dana and Aero, although uh, Wale has explained that, well, different, different set situations, but they have, oh, sort of, is right. they, they have sort of pulled out a bit and say we need to re-examine things. Yeah. So uh, it, it, the airspace is what it is. And the rest, again, we understand it's not a charity. Uh, the airline industry is not a charity. So they have to make money. And we're hearing that fuel alone is, you know, uh, Wally was giving us the figure of um, it could be as high as 50% of the operating costs. Yes, uh, at, at this moment, yes. At this moment, yes, because of the cost. So, so w w w are we stuck with this matter of um, air airfares could be up to half a million naira in the most expensive case? Um, we are looking at, we are praying for it not to. We wish it not to. And uh, I just hope we will not get there because the only way I can see it moving to that amount is if mm -hmm. the naira further devalues. Uh, it's not only the fuel now. If the narrow continue to, to fall spiral as it's going right now, they will get to that figure. But today, if you walk up to the counter, if you want to pick a return flight to any of these one half flights, you, you must hold about that to 50,000 that uh, Wally the million Wally we were discussing before I came in. Just, just to be sure. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting. People probably will be able to understand, but he's explained that the domestic market is one thing. Uh, people who are used to the most popular, uh, arguably, uh, Nigerian destination, you know, Heathrow and, uh, you know, in, in the UK yeah. and in the US. Um, you know, it, it's not what one would have thought, uh, considering that most flights here have been uh, uh, an hour, uh, maybe two hours. Yeah, and, yeah, the max is one hour, 45 minutes. There you uh, go. That, depending and on the aircraft, I, anyway, you can use about two and a half hours if you use the smaller aircraft. For and when you use made away. And the UK is generally around six hours. So you would have done some sums in your head, but it's not as bad as that yeah. yet uh, for a number of. Uh, dynamics that uh, have been spoken about earlier. So do, what, does this look, what does this now begin to look like? Uh, what can be done? Um, it, it seems, because you've just said it, uh, we're helpless. Uh, the, air, the airlines cannot get all the foreign exchange that they require, so they have to resort sometimes to the parallel market. We all know what, what, what that is saying. What, so what hope is there for this, uh, for this industry, uh, the airline industry, not to collapse and shut down. You, you, you cannot uh, insulate the airline industry from the general economy of Nigeria. The monetary policy that is giving the economy problems is also affecting the airlines. The fuel importation uh, crisis, which is which also exacerbated by the, by the rate of Naira to the Forex, is also contributing. All these are not within the purview and control of the airline. What the airline can only do is to seek government assistance, either, uh, uh, ensuring that they have more space in the official window to get space and, um, and other necessary equipment for them to fly, provided they will not abuse this, just as they've abused the customs uh, uh, clearance that clearance. they were doing to them. Because uh, there's, there's that, if you, if you go to the list of uh, airlines applying to get, uh, bring equipment in without going to customs, you have so, so many organizations that have nothing to do with the aviation industry, mm -hmm. but they're on the list. So that thing, I think it's that fear. And uh, for, for, for me, this is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I feel it's time to bridge that gap between the official yeah. and the parallel market. Let us, let us take that shot yeah. in the hand once and for all and face the bullet. Mm -hmm. Because the continuous um, um, differential 
It's mm. giving them for round tripping. It's giving them yeah. for all your seeing, all the games going around. Yeah, yeah but the, the problem, I'm, I'm sorry, the, and again, this is my opinion. Too. This is my opinion too. Like, we don't do things logically. The fact that doing, you know, going with, um, you know, uh, Wally's suge I mean, uh, uh, Olumide's suggestion um, is going to put a lot of people that you and I know who out of business. Mm. Uh, and that is a problem. Exactly. And that's why <laughs> that have, is the problem. That's why you have more BDCs <laughs> yeah. than companies or mm. new startups. Exactly. So to, 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 to go the way you're saying, we just me ah, no, now, what, so what will some people... Now, it's, I don't know. But, so who is the, who is the priority? Bro, is it the Nigerian mm. system or is it a certain level and class of business people? I, I think, um, let's, let's just look at it uh, this way, that um, is um, a case of uh, which one comes first, is it the chicken, chicken or the egg? egg. <laughs> so, but we know, I want to believe that we know what we should do, mm -hmm. but the lack of political will <sighs> is really, when, when they say lack of political will, it looks so bogus, looks very ambiguous, but I think we should know what to do at this time. Um, not to only help the airlines, but also to help the economy. And that is why uh, the CBN has to do more, has to inflate this economy whichever way they want to do it. But if we also look at it, does the CBN have enough money to go around some of these requirements of individuals, companies? Because we as we explained before, we the CBN enough. doesn't have enough they don't uh, even uh, forex have to even so, meet some of its so, own obligations. But, yes, they do have, have, but they give this forex to people who do not desire this. <laughs> so it now becomes, are we, you know, uh, cutting our quotes according to our size? Are we taking the priority? Are we looking at the, uh, the, who needs this forex more? Mm -hmm. And it's still That's the political will that we're talking about. Exactly. We're, we're going back to it. <laughs> Mazi Okorafo, good morning, sir. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, our guests in the studio. Yeah. Honestly speaking, Sayori, it is not ready for our business in terms of economy and the rest. You see, when we talk about this, like, this the, the, the airline is the cheapest means of traveling as far as Nigeria is concerned, even other countries. Because you cannot transact business outside Nigeria by going by rail or by train. It will take time even if you go through ships. It's, uh, now look at today. Today, for example, in Nigeria, at, Virgin Atlanta is selling the highest economy ticket at 1.7 million, Lagos, London, Lagos. Like, it is cheaper to buy the ticket from London to Nigeria than to buy from London. Or if you have a friend down there, they will buy it and do this for you at around 5 or five, five something. Now, Not anymore. if all these sellers now, I'm just hearing from one of my guests that not anymore, Mazi. It used to be the case, <laughs> not anymore. but not anymore, I am being told. Not anymore. But, but, but what we are facing today is this. When they suspend all these airlines, it is not healthy for us. Do you know that today Nigeria go to Ghana to buy tickets? Yeah, are you aware of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nigeria yeah. go to Ghana to buy tickets. If you are traveling outside, they go to Ghana. Is it not boosting the economy of Ghana? Yeah, absolutely. So what is that? Like? The question now is this. The airline are now complaining that central bank refused to repatriate their money. So what is the federal government? The central bank should do the need for. I agree that the forest is... What is the... Now look at in Angola. Angola, the, 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 the rate is for... It was 600 naira per dollar. But today in Angola, it's 400 naira. What type of magic did they do to bring back that... To, to, to 400. What is the central bank? Are they not reading history? Are they not reading the... Look, everything ties up with the central bank. Central bank has not to have what they dictate. It's affecting Nigeria, the poor market. Because businessmen go outside to get all this. Because Nigeria is not producing. We are okay, not okay, Mazi. Uh, th th thank you for calling in, Mazi. We really appreciate your call. As you know, we always uh, value your comments. Uh, uh, your, your, your contributions to uh, our topics. This whole matter, I want us to look at it for the understanding of our viewers, um, that is those of them who are not, you know, techies and understand it. This whole matter of um, uh, the funds of airlines, of foreign airlines, uh, being trapped in Nigeria, which has made them begin to take some other kind of action. What's that about? I know it's all so forex related, but if they can't get their money out, how, how, how has it worsened the situation that we are talking about now? Well, let me take you to, to, to the process. Uh, in, there, there's always a bilateral air service agreement between one country and the other. And in that agreement, 
you nominate airlines to represent your country. Now, in representing your country, that means you have, you are, you are asking the cardinal principle that you must reciprocate. But that means the airline you represent your own country to must operate. But what we have heard is that the other airlines have done their own part of the flight. We are not going. And sometimes, somewhere along the line, because of the demand for, from Nigerian passengers who are always eager to travel, this country okay, ex extends, asks for extension, extra flight, and extra entry points. In asking for this extra uh, flight and extra point, they also increase gauge. Gauge means the aircraft itself. So they use bigger aircraft just to ensure that they, fall, they can use the, uh, the, the allocated uh, frequencies for them. Um, uh, maximally. Now, in doing this, they generate revenue. Now, this revenue are supposed to be remitted on a daily basis after paying all local taxes. Local yeah, means Nigerian taxes, mm -hmm. taxes and charges. Thereafter, whatever, whatever, is, whatever limit will be remitted at the official rate of exchange for that day. Okay, okay. For that day. Mm -hmm. So, if I am having 40 million as my uh, revenue after all uh, taxes and charges have been paid. That means for that they have 40 million. So anytime I want, anytime you're remitting my money, you're remitting my money, my, you're remitting 40 million to me. So, but what so we've, been, we've defaulted. Nigeria well, has defaulted. Yes, yes. The, the money, the money is in. Especially have, on the daily. On, yes, on the daily. Yes, daily yes. Yeah. But at times you see, you might want to go and wait for you to do it in a month. Mm. But it kept moving. Mm. It, it, but sometime in March it was 284. He moved about 4 or 15 June, June, July, and now we're looking at about 600 million. This includes non IATA airlines, mm -hmm. putting the figure together. So, but that's, that's the thing we're going to we have, we have defaulted in remitting, and that's why they, they, you, you saw the letter from Emirates. Emirates was even very careful. Emirates first wrote, it, they came down here, met with CBN. The CBN official agreed, agreed that they were, going to, they were going to work on it and they were going to do something. That was not there. Then they wrote a the letter. Wait, they wrote a the letter about two months ago, stating, stating, stating that a month ago. So that, well, they would have to reduce their frequencies because they have tried to even buy fuel in Nigeria with the Naira they have. But the, the marketers have refused to accept Naira from them. So they have to bring dollars from their country to pay for additional fuel in Nigeria. It's so, almost like a double jeopardy for them. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I've been holding on for Mr. George. Uh, good morning, Mr. George in Ikeja. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Thank you for calling in. Good morning. Uh, Uncle Yuri, um, you know, <clears throat> I always prefer to address problems from the court not from the effect. We have a system. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We have a system where the central bank has not, have, uh, has not received uh, one single dollar from NNPC for six months. They said because of oil theft, there is no money, and the uh, product new, uh, NNPC is using the little they are getting to, to pay for subsidy. So where is the central bank going to get the dollar to finance all these problems we are talking about? Hmm. So if we hmm. want to solve the problem, let us solve it from the root. Who is stealing the oil? Then how do we get it solved? Before all these ones are in effect, let us go to the root. I, 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 where it's good somehow that it's coming at this time when some people, so many people are contesting to leave the country. Each candidate must come and tell us what they want to do to our oil industry. As it is now, Uncle Yori, we are talking about not being able to fly. How many people we are flying before? Let the government please make our roads safe. If it is safe for me to go from here to Abuja, I can drive my car and go there. Yes. But you cannot yes. go, you can't do that now. Yes. You put your well, life at risk. The, and this is in spite of the, uh, you the know, the, 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 the infrastructure that this administration uh, has concentrated on. Uh, in spite of that, there still is the, 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 the lapse that you're, you're talking about. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. George. Uh, it's an interesting point uh, question. Uh, so where is the central bank going to get the forex it needs? Yeah. Uh, and also pointing out that and MPC, mm. as he put it quite dramatically, <laughs> has not received a single, single dollar, dollar yet. Yeah, uh, has, not, uh, uh, has not deposited a single dollar uh, yet. Yes, I said it uh, earlier mm. that um, it's very difficult for NNPC um, to, you know, take care of all this um, responsibility. If you don't earn so much, it's going to be very difficult for you to meet all these um, requirements. Is this, going this, to the, is this going back to the production capacity yeah. of so our, our, our non-existent refineries? What I'm even going to say is that 
the CBI would have taken it as a priority to say, yes, you have your money in various banks. So what we are going to do, if we're going to pay you maybe 50 million this month, in another two months, we're going to pay you another 50 months than allow everything to accumulate. We've been in this position before. In 2016, um, the airlines trap fund was um, over 600 million naira. And I remember the Minister of Aviation um, mounted pressure um, on the federal government, on the president and even the minister of um, uh, finance. And gradually we were able to pay, all the, uh, to pay them their money. But somehow, again, we we're back to square we're one. back to square one again. We're not saying we shouldn't owe or we're not saying we shouldn't have delay. But try as much as possible. We should try as much as possible to look at ways we can pay some of this. Is this part of the political will that you talked about? Is, is political will also echoing into all of this, the discipline necessary to do I think we're very which, disciplined in Nigeria. Yes, very, yes, very yes, disciplined. You know. Like uh, Olumide said, uh, this is just part of your bilateral services agreement. We have it there. It's if we can help by you definition, to we sat down, we <laughs> exactly. agree. We're both if we have not done our own so what part, kind of a business if is we that? have not done our own part, uh, we can't blame people who have done their own part. Because I've listened to it and people say, uh, because the bilateral air services agreement, you know, um, is, is tilted towards the... I say, no, that is not even the problem we are talking about now. We are talking about, you are owing somebody, there are funds in Nigeria, let us look for ways to make sure that they get their money out of Nigeria. You are not bringing... It's just like, you know, uh, somebody wants to score, and you is in a very vantage position to yeah, score, right. and you remove the goalpost. <laughs> so we should be we should be realistic with what we're doing. Okay, let me ask you about Mr. Ade in the UK. Good morning to you, sir. Just like Ade in the UK. Good morning. Well, there's a big yeah delay. You know, this is something yeah. we said about three, four, five seconds ago. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry about that, uh, Mr. Adi in the UK. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I kept it too long, but uh, <laughs> if you can, uh, it, it, uh, uh, have we lost that call? Yeah, I think we've, we've, we've lost that call. So I, I could see that you were agreeing with most of what um, <laughs> he was saying. Simon Wally. We, we hear that Ade is there. The Ade in the UK is there. Hello, good morning, Ade in the UK. Okay, no more. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, so. Yeah, if, if you say with Wally, yes, but not with the last caller. Um, an agreement is an agreement. It's a responsibility. You're talking about international obligation. And if you look at the, that document, there are two signatories. The mm -hmm. Nigerian party signed, mm -hmm. the, other part, the other party signed its own. And it's, it's, it's there. Okay. You, you, now, now, sorry. Uh, this is interesting to me because you said, yes, if we're talking about Wally, but not with uh, Mr. George who called in earlier. Yeah. Uh, explain, the, where, where do you differ? But for Mr. George, you say uh, NAPC is not getting money from the, they are stealing um, crude oil. They should not be able to participate. It is your responsibility to, to, to ensure you, you get your, your funds, yeah. you provide uh, security for your people Absolutely. and your assets. It's, it's not the job of the foreign or, yeah. your, or your or your business trade partners. Yes, you see, the implication of what we are doing at yeah. the moment is that it's going to come back big, big time hit on yeah. the domestic aviation industry. Mm. You see, look at the countries that are in this kind of a league. Mm. Venezuela, yeah. Lebanon, mm. Zimbabwe, Algeria. Sri Lanka. Are these the countries we want to be on the same page with? Mm. Mm. Because mm. when you now go for uh, aircraft leases, these same organizations mm. will tell you that, well, because you're going here, you have a credit issue problem. Then when an aircraft, uh, airlines want to lease aircraft, they pay double what other countries are yeah, paying. So, yeah. When they want to insure aircraft, they pay double what others are paying. Yeah, Simply because our business is Yeah, because of our yeah, uh, bad credit history. You cannot rub the pains of, of, the, of, yeah. of, of the government on this on, on other airlines. And, and most of our airlines are, all, are owned by private organizations. Yeah. So you're going to punish them for what they did not partake in. Okay. You want to buy space and go for training. So we need to resolve this amicably. And again, like what they said, staggered payment since mm -hmm. March. And it kept increasing, and you tell them you don't have money. And it kept increasing. Something must be done. Okay. Um, uh, Chidi in Kapanchan, good morning to you. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Good morning to your guests in sure. the studio. Sure. And good morning to Nigerian viewers as well. <laughs> 
Okay. And good morning and to you. <laughs> good morning to you. <laughs> in my own take, Uncle Yori, mm -hmm. I know it is not every Nigerian that is interested in flying. So many people would have wished to fly like myself, but I do not have the capacity. But one thing the Nigerian government must have to do is to less the overdependence on dollar on every issue that has to do with Nigeria. Nigeria is a sovereign state. We have so many options, like the, the, the air one that we are talking about, which is solely used for the flying of aircraft, should by now be able to be produced in Nigeria if the NNPC will be given the needed services that is required. Therefore, I implore the government to be proactive in doing the needful in order to put the NNPC in a very good state to do the right thing for the benefit of producing things that we are going to be consuming mm. in our own country. Mm. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Very now, uh, just, just to touch on something that um, uh, he, he, that uh, Chidi just said there from Kapachan, uh, that we, we, we are over-dependent on, on yes. the dollar. It yes. reminded me of the clout Russia, Russia has. As you know, Russia is insisting that, look, okay, in the midst of all this uh, robot, uh, it's okay, we'll say you fail, but you will pay in rubles. Yeah. Uh, okay, you know, I, I mentioned it. Um, mm. You pay in rubles. That, Don't start that yeah. dollar. I don't yes, know what the dollar is. So much, pay in uh, our currency. Yeah, there's so much pressure on, 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 on dollars. Because if we had a good system, you see the number of people traveling out, outside this country um, to go and study in um, UK, US, and they need forex. That is also a problem for the Central Bank of Nigeria. And the number of people that are traveling now to go and study in the UK mm -hmm. is humongous. In fact, there's a data that said, I can't, I, I can't remember vividly, mm -hmm. but thousands of people who left the country last year to go and study in the, U, in the UK, they pay dollars or they pay in pounds, you look for foreign currency. A lot of people are traveling outside this country for medicals. If we had a very good, if we had good hospitals in Nigeria, we will retain some of this. Exactly. We will retain some of these foreign estates. And so these are you part will, of the pressures exactly, on pressure, the, this, the, the, the currency of so choice much, exactly, of those destinations. so much. You see people even want to go to, uh, to the U.S. to go and enjoy themselves. They also go and get PTA or BTA. You're putting a lot of pressure on that currency. So, and we're not earning so much now like we used to earn. So it's putting a lot of pressure, but that is not to um, condone some of the things that the CBN has done. Mm -hmm. This is a business agreement. We have business with you. Whichever way you can do it, uh, you do that and make sure that they get their money. I don't know how you're going to stagger it. And that is what Ayata has said. Give us part of the money this, this month. The next two months, you can also give us part of it. We see commitment on your own so side. So that whole fiscal discipline aspect to the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Emmanuel, uh, apologies for, for keeping you waiting a bit in Otopo Benue State. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Good morning to your guests in the studio. Good morning. I, I want to appreciate TBC this morning for the opportunity you are giving to us to be calling in like this. I think the only television house that can miss this I don't know the entire world, but TVC is the only thing. <laughs> oh, have oh, to the after the goodwill, <laughs> which we, you know, highly appreciate. I think you After the back. goodwill, <laughs> and now the very important thing you wanted to say, oh, we didn't get God. to hear about it. See if you can call in again, Emmanuel, and um, I'll interrupt myself mid sentence uh, if necessary. See if you can get in again. Although there are also a lot of uh, other people are uh, trying. It's, <laughs> I just don't know where to go from here because there's so many things that um, need to be done that we have left undone. Maybe yeah. not because we are irresponsible, but yeah. as the people say locally, in a condition make crayfish bend. It's cut off with us. Yes, <laughs> it's cut off. It's condition, yeah. and so all of the yeah. all of these things have now caught up with us, yeah. and um, we, we we find ourselves where we are. And uh, how do we get out of this? Well, mm -hmm. as far as uh, Olumide could see, well, uh, investigations from his part led to wait for that private refinery to come on up, <laughs> and uh, things will get better there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> looking, at the, looking at the rubble issue you just raised now, yes. 
it became uh, a necessary position because their assets are being seized. Yes. And uh, if, if you pay into those accounts that were available before, they will not get the money. Mm. So that's mm. it's, it's a temporary measure. Mm -hmm. Because you're paying the rubles. So you bring the money to us here, yes. we will give you, you will send the rubles to you. The money comes into the country. Those foreign credits come to, not in those accounts, accounts outside, outside their country. So it's, it's a temporary measure, but it's good for them to survive on it. But you see, um, we, we just talked about what happens to the aviation industry if we don't pay this money. I can tell you, I was on a radio, I was on a radio program, I was on a radio program yesterday, and when callers were calling in, and they are now entering uh, private vehicles from Lagos to yeah. Abuja for 40,000 naira. Absolutely. PMS has not increased. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm not the National Union of Road Transport will come out and say, this is not right. Just because of what has happened um, yeah. with air transport. Mm -hmm. fair. They've moved the uh, traveling, traveling um, cost now from 20,000 to 40,000 on some route. <laughs> and like I said, even with, at 40,000, you couldn't get a seat. Mm -hmm. That you had to go to a local to a local bus station, yeah. picked, uh, paid for about, uh, about twenty thousand naira, and the bus broke down on the road. They spent two days. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got Emmanuel back. <laughs> in anyway, oh, uh, good morning, Emmanuel. <laughs> You must come back after this prayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just lost him again. Uh, the, 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 the network must be such that um, it's not a very um, strong connection uh, that we are getting. And um, yeah, so, you know, thanks for that uh, explanation that you say it's temporary because um, uh, the dollar has become the currency of choice. But it's strategic on the part of Russia. I, yes, I yes, because, understand. Yeah, because if you use the so former yeah. method, the money will be So what they say, pay the rubles, you have to come to Russia, mm -hmm. bring that money into an account, a safe account, so where they are in control of that money. So you can't freeze anything. You can't freeze anything. Uh, that's, from, uh, yes. from outside. So that's why they're having that. Uh, but also, we, 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 are, we, are not, we are not going to that level of people sanctioning us. Because yeah. if, if you look at the countries I highlighted earlier, they are suffering from sanctions. Lebanon, it was because of that bomb blast at the, at the port mm -hmm. that wrecked them. But this other was had sanctions, so you could understand. But I we are not having sanctions. We have just mismanaged mm. our monetary policy. Mm. And how do you now tell people you don't have money when mm. you see the amount you spent at your delegates' conference? Mm. Okay, let, let me see if I can get Ade. Ade has also called back. Good morning, Ade. Yes, good morning to your guests, uh, Dr. Yori. Thank you. Um, quickly, last year when I was coming to Nigeria in October, I paid 3,600 pounds for tickets. This month, when I wanted to travel, it takes 5,400, so I changed my mind. 5, oh, dear, you changed your mind. For mm -hmm. Virgin Atlantic upper class. Uh, when that gets you, see the, you see the <laughs> difference. 3,006 in October last year. Now, this month, this month is high season. Well, and 5,500. Uh, 5, 5, yes. So, I'm waiting till maybe September when the students go back to yeah, school to no, keep yeah. by a bit. It will be like 4,000, then I can yeah. travel. You see, so it's oh, everywhere. It's everywhere. Yes. But the problem about Nigeria is that the central, the man who is in charge of your bank is a member of a political party. In the UK, our governor is independent. He has, he's not under our government here. He's independent. He's a governor of our central bank. Nobody dictates to him. It's his member that says, or in Nigeria, it's a different story. Well, arguably, you, you don't know Canada. that for sure. You, you don't know that for sure, Ade. But I take the point you are, are making. Are you, talking, are you talking of UK? No, I'm talking about <laughs> Nigeria. Oh, he is. He's a member of political party. Now, he told the whole world that he's a member of political party. <laughs> and he's to are you going to deny? <laughs> yeah, but, but that part about <laughs> the non independence of uh, Central okay, Bank. Okay. The non independence of Central party, Bank from, from influences. From political like influences or otherwise. Say, That's the part I was referring to. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, especially for contributing uh, those uh, figures to give us some sort of perspective. Last year, October, cost you 3,500 3, mm, yeah. pounds to come here. The, uh, what? Yeah. This, this year? It's, 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 about 5,000. Nice, it's about 5,500. Um, it's waiting for it to go down, to, go down to 4,000. Like, well, well, let's say that's between Lagos and London mm -hmm. and, and, and England. If you go to, if you're operating from England to Ghana, Benin Republic, Togo, it will be about 3,000 mm. uh, pounds. Yeah. Like what is 5,500 uh, 5, to Nigeria? It will be less if it goes to, if it was... Yes, 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 like I said, um, it's not only Nigeria that we are having this. Mm. There are two main factors that, you know, has contributed, that have contributed to some of the things that we're, we're seeing now. And he rightly mentioned the, the last caller, um, the, 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 the season, mm. yes, the season we are in now is usually very high okay. during okay. summer. Yes, but so. that is not to say that FS should go. Last year or two years ago, it wasn't the same thing. I agree that, you know, um, the problem we have with um, Forex and um, jet, jet fuel, mm -hmm. it also bites very hard in, um, in other, other climbs. 
But the problem we have is that they have over there, the issue with them there is that why it is cheaper there is that they have volume. They have volume because everybody it's a very takes important to, point. yes, you everybody know. takes to, uh, take so to air economies travel. of scale. Yes, Kiki. economy of scale. And you also have the trains. These trains are working very well. So you can travel from London to Paris through train, which is very which is cheaper than going by air. So they have alternatives. We don't, we have, don't have alternatives. The roads we have here, like um, um, very soon, if care is not taken, the road transportation people, like um, Olumide mentioned, will start competing with the the airlines. <laughs> exactly. Well, the alternative, the, the alternative uh, well, they have started. <laughs> they have started. It, 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 looks like, it looks like to the extent that it is possible, Zoom will, will, exactly. will be the alternative that we have. So I'm not coming to Abuja for the meeting. Can we just set up a Zoom call exactly. and that kind of a thing? Exactly. Um, Kennedy in uh, Port Harcourt. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you, Mr. Yori, and my two beautiful brothers with you there, sir. Meaning that uh, you, 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 you're enjoying the expertise. Please continue. <laughs> Look, uh, there, there's, this, there's this thing that really bothers me sick every time I hear it. That is this buck passing. NMPC said that, CBN said that. I want to ask a question. If NMPC is complaining that they are not getting product because of vandalization, so tell me, is there no contract somewhere that is given to some people to manage those pipelines so that, so that this, issue of, this issue of vandalization no, no longer raises its ugly head? How come those people are not being asked any question? Mm. Let me tell you what I think. Yeah. If you take our leaders and members of no matter what the cost of airline, they can always fly. So it doesn't bite them. But when it hits them hard, that is only when they act. Otherwise, and don't they know the people that the contract were given to to manage those pipelines? Don't they know the people? Why can't they ask questions? Yeah. You know, the contract was given to you to do SSYZ to make sure our, our pipelines are safe. And yes, our pipelines are still being vandalized. What is going on? Why are they not asking questions? They are not feeling the bite. So I can tell you that is why, as far as I'm concerned, our leaders are just so very faceless. Oh dear. And that is the truth. Oh thank dear. you very much. Well, thank you very much uh, for contributing uh, to the program. You were our last caller. In fact, we hardly have very much more time, but it's been quite as enlightening as it has been, also quite frustrating because yeah. we can't see an immediate way out. Uh, the figures that we've, uh, spe that we've been speaking about, as horrible as they are, you know what I mean by horrible as you know, non-competitive as they are. Uh, uh, for now, it looks like Nigerians are just going to have to grin and bear it, unfortunately. But I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your expertise, your knowledge, and uh, also being able to give us perspective uh, so that we have a better understanding of, um, quite frankly, the quagmire uh, that we are in. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Wale Shadari, thank journalist you and uh, aviation expert, and uh, other expert, Olumide uh, Omwayo, uh, Assistant Secretary General, Aviation Roundtable, Lagos. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you for having me. So that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folari. Bye-bye for now.